Have you ever wondered how you can know God's will for your life? As believers, we all desire to hear God's voice and do what he says. There can be a real fear of missing God's will by making the wrong decision or taking the wrong path. If you feel that way, that's a good sign because you have a desire to please God. If you have trouble with hearing his voice or knowing his will, let me encourage you with these four points. They say that note takers are world changers and we know it must be true because it sort of rhymes. So here we go, number one, get quiet. Make intentional time to get quiet with God and do your best to silence all of the distractions. Mute the phone, close the tabs, turn off the notifications, and carve out time for God and the Holy Spirit as he leads us. One pastor says, do not make prayer a monologue, make it a conversation. William McGill said the value of persistent prayer is that not God will hear us, but that we will finally hear God. Another vital way to know God's will is to study his word. Allow the scriptures to light your way. In Psalms 119 in verse 130, it says the entrance of your words gives light. As we read God's word, it lights our path and gives us insight to his will, character, and preferences. Number two, follow peace. You'll realize that as the Holy Spirit leads us, it's never through manipulation or coercion. He also doesn't shout his will and is never forceful. He is the good shepherd who leads us by his voice. God's will today will be God's will in a year. Be quick to listen and obey, but never feel pressured or forced. Whatever season of life you find yourself in, if you do not have peace about the situation, run. Don't sign on the line. Don't put a ring on it. Don't say I do. Don't pursue that thing. Follow peace. And lastly, number four, be obedient. In Matthew 25, verse 21, it says, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. Notice that it doesn't say well thought, well intentioned, well attempted. It says well done. The final piece of God's will for us is to obey. At the end of the day and at the end of your life, it all boils down to obedience. I love this scripture in Isaiah 58, verse 11. It says, and the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your soul in scorched and dry places and give strength to your bones. And you will be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for my friends today. I thank you for their desire and need and will to know your will for their lives. Father, I pray that they would allow the Holy Spirit to lead them, that they'd be led by peace in everything they do. And we thank you that you are with us continually in every step that we take. We thank you for all these things in your name, Jesus' name, amen.